our goal in this recording is to uh, discuss the direct delta function in the Laplace domain and how to deal with it. Before we get to the impulse of the direct delta function, which is the unit impulse, we'll talk about the unit pulse. Uh, let's say it looks like this. It has a half width of A and we'll center it at T sub zero here. We'll define it this way. So it's an impulse, we'll call it delta sub A. A is the half width, half width. Centered it at T sub zero. We'll have a total width of two A. We want the area under that curve or that inside that pulse to be one, a unit pulse. So the height is one over two A. So the area of this rectangle is uh, one. Here's how it's defined. It's, it's zero to the left of T minus A, zero to the right of T plus A, and one over two A between those limits. We can take the uh, Laplace transform fairly easily. Well, first we have to express it using unit step. Remember, it has a start time and a stop time, so it's one over two a times the unit step for the start time minus the unit step for the stop time. So the start time is t minus where it starts, zero minus a, and the stop time is t minus zero plus a. So that's how we write it as a time function. Um, then we can take the Laplace transform because we have Laplace transforms for unit steps. It's e to the minus whatever this argument here is. In this case, it's e zero minus a times s over one over s, and we've got the one over two a out front. So there's the first piece. There's the second piece. We can factor out an e to the minus t zero s. There is our Laplace transform of this unit pulse. Now we'll define the Dirac delta function as the limit as the width of that unit pulse as the width goes to zero or as the half width goes to zero. So the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function. Here, here's the notation for the Dirac delta function. Do we get rid of this subscript A? This is a pulse. This is the impulse, the Dirac delta function. So the Laplace transform is the Laplace transform of this limit. Because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, we can interchange the limit and the operation. So we can take the limit of Plus transform of this guy, which was on the previous chart. Uh, if we just set a to zero, we get one minus one over zero, or zero over zero. So we use Opatel's rule. Take the derivative of numerator and denominator. Have that. And now when you set a to zero, these e to the plus or minus a s become ones. You have two s over two s are the limit or the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function is e to the minus s times wherever that impulse is in time. Uh, put, to put it in the table, we're gonna change this t sub zero to a, a different a. Uh, it's just time of the impulse. This a here is the time of the impulse. So we have another Laplace transform pair. Dirac delta function or an unit impulse at time A has the Laplace transform of E to the minus A S. So if it's a Laplace, if it's a unit impulse right at time zero, A equals zero, it's just one. An example with the differential equation. Here's the second order equation with just uh, the only inputs are two impulses, one at time pi over two and another at time three pi over two. All starting at rest are zero initial conditions. First, can you guess what 
It's going to happen up till get an input up until pi over two here. Um, but we'll see. But if if there's no inputs and there's no initial conditions, it ought to just stay zero until something happens. And something happens at pi over two. Sorry, I'm getting text as I'm trying to teach here. So we take, we find the subsidiary equation. S squared minus all the initial conditions. So it's just S squared Y plus Y. And here we just found the uh, loss transform of unit impulses. So this will be E to the minus pi S over two, this is e to the minus three pi over two S. Divide by S squared plus one on both sides. Here's the Laplace transform of the solution. Now, how, remember how we deal with these things? You have something times E to the minus AS. What do we do? Here, I kind of corrected this chart. We do two things. We replace T with T minus A in the argument of inverse Laplace transform. And we multiply by the unit step with that same T minus A as its argument. So let's go back to this. So the inverse Laplace transform of this thing is the same as the inverse Laplace transform of that thing, which is just sine of T. Do two things. Instead of T, we replace it with T minus pi over two here and minus three pi over two here, and multiply each one by the corresponding unit step, the same argument, okay? I have trouble with it. And now we can use uh, the uh, trig identity. So sine of t minus pi over two, which is co minus cosine of t, and minus three pi over two is plus cosine of t. So here is our answer in terms of unit steps. Um, and what does that mean? Well, this doesn't kick in until time pi over two. So it's just zero up until time pi over two. Time pi over two, this part kicks in, but this part doesn't kick in until time three pi over two. So from pi over two to three pi over two, it's just minus cosine. And then when this kicks in at time three pi over two, minus cosine t plus cosine t, which is just zero. So here's a way to write the answer without using the unit steps. It's three different things over three different sections of the timeline. By the way, minus cosine t, Cosine t would start up here, go through there, go down like that. So minus cosine t starts down here, goes up, there, minus. So here's what the sketch of the solution looks like. And I often make my students sketch the response because a lot of them cannot go from here to here. Even though you've got an answer here, if you can't sketch it like this, you probably didn't really understand what you're doing or what the answer means. You're just, just going through the steps. Here's another quick example. Still same second order differential equation. It looks the same, but now we've got an initial condition on the derivative. Subsidiary equation will be S squared big Y minus zero times S minus plus the y, and this guy is just e to the minus pi s. So we'll have an s squared plus one times y, and then a one plus this on the right, divide through by the s squared plus one, and here's the Laplace transform of the solution. Inverse Laplace transform of each of these pieces is sine of t again. So this is just good old sine of t. I could multiply it by unit step t, in difference. And this will be not just sine of t, but sine of t minus pi times the unit step, the argument t minus pi. 
Uh, when I subtract pi from the argument, I change the sign by a trig identity. So we have sine t minus sine t times this unit step. Um, so it'll be sine t starting at time zero. And then at time pi, this guy kicks in and I got sine t minus sine t, so it's zero. There's the sketch. Sine of t, and then it goes to zero. How you do those things? Um, a lot of my students have trouble with this part of the Laplace transform. 